Oh, a line that I might, I love, uh, sorry, I f your husband. <laughs> I, because I, I think I don't know, but I think it might be the only line that Blitz has said that uh, I have too. So I. <laughs> Do we have any hell of a boss fans in here? <laughs> and Hasbun Hotel. <laughs> All right, now what I want you to do for me is when I introduce each person to whoop and cheer until they sit down. Can you do that? Can you do that? Okay, let's welcome our first guest to the stage. It's the wonderful Christina V. Come up, Christina. Keep whooping and cheering. Keep going. Keep it going for the wonderful Erica Lindbeck! <laughs> there you go. The mics are on the table there. Please take a mic. Okay, next up, can we have a huge round of applause for Brandon Rogers? And last, but by all means not least, huge round of applause for Vivian Madrano! <laughs> Sit yourselves down. The, the mics are on the table for you guys. Please take a mic, take a water. Guys, round of applause, look at our beautiful panel. <laughs> I feel very exposed over here. <laughs> I know, I know. We have something blocking our parts. But <laughs> <laughs> I love that they... My parts are on display. Yeah, I know. You're, you're it's a little bit early for that. They put a barricade for your protection. Yes. Not ours. Yeah. yeah. Now, guys, are you excited for this weekend at LA Comic Con? Yes. Oh, my Woo! God. I'm so excited. Can you hear me? Oh my God, we're on the TV up there. And we're, promo we're promoting IGN. How much are they paying us to be in? I haven't seen any of it. I, I'm not, I haven't gotten a single check for this. No, uh, oh, we, we don't have a mic uh, on. We need all four mics on, please. Sound person. Woo. Woo. Vivian's mic's not working. Sound is low, yeah. The gods of oh, sound, please. Um, There's a Brandon delay. and I were just saying <laughs> that it's nice to do a convention in our hometown, which is lovely. Yes. Yeah. yeah it's nice to. We be all got to sleep in our own beds last night, I think. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you think? No. Where I'm are speaking you? for myself. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> were you all in your own beds? Yes. Okay. Good. Yes. Okay. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Vivian, has your mic been taken away? Oh, wait. Can we share a mic? Can, can we share a mic? Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes. A little Yay! bit. Yes! <laughs> Vivian has a voice. Round of applause. We've got the mic working. Yes. Um, now, I wanted to ask, I have just celebrated my first year in LA. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. I am not living in a box under the freeway, so oh. I survived. <laughs> I actually survived. Well, good. So I wanted to ask you guys, what is one thing that you discovered about living in L.A. that nobody told you about? One thing that we discovered in L.A. that we, what? That nobody told you about. When no you one told me about. Here. Uh, how many donuts and sidekicks are here? <laughs> <laughs> sidekicks? Sidekicks. Oh, sidekicks. sidekicks. Yeah. I thought you said sidekicks. sidekicks. Like a superhero. <laughs> oh, yeah. There are, a, there are uh, not very sidekicks. A lot of men in tights. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, psychics, yeah. Uh, yeah. There are a lot. A lot of fortune, fortune tellers. Hello. Yeah. I feel like you've not done the LA experience until you've done like a tarot reader or a psychic. Or a sidekick. Or get a parking ticket. Oh, I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have got, or get towed. Yeah. Oh, how, 
uh, you I've been toed, ticketed, bashed, rear-ended, T-boned, you name it. I've had it all happen to me while I've been on somewhere to go. Hey, I was kidnapped. What? Really? What? I got in a car accident, and I called the tow truck, and then a tow truck showed up, and he's like, yes, I'm AAA. I'm like, okay. So I'm in the car, and then AAA calls like, hey, we're here. Where are you? I'm like, I'm with you. And he's like, don't move. Put me on speakerphone. It was a whole ordeal. Oh my God. So, that's my, I, I grew up here, but that was the most exciting thing that's happened to me. Jeez. Did they get the guy? Did they, like, what happened? He, he pulled over. They had, like, the cops on the line. So he, he pulled over and let me and my car free. Okay, good. Yeah. Oh my God. It's horrifying. It's crazy. Oh my God. Well, yes. So don't do that. Don't, um, what are we talking about? LA is a nice place. <laughs> LA is great. And don't let that happen. Yeah. Scary LA stories. Um, hell of a boss and has been hotel. Let's talk about that. Let's, let's not talk about kidnapping and, <laughs> and tow trucks and sidekicks. <laughs> I'm a little you, offended. I've never been kidnapped. To when you first conceived this idea. I mean, it's taken off clearly. <laughs> And people absolutely love it. But when you first started, what was your idea for it? Um, well, I mean, I've had it for a very long time. Like, has been some of those characters I've had, like, really far back. And so I've been, like, working on it and, and trying to do something with the characters. And it wasn't until, like, college that I sort of put together what it would be and made um, the original pilot. Um, and then Hell of a Boss kind of spawned from that. I was developing what that world would look like, what the show would look like, and I was making lots of characters for it. And these characters felt like they had a life of their own. Um, so I met with Brandon, and I pitched you a number of ideas, because I was like, I want to work with this guy, but I don't know if he'll like this one that I want to do, so I'm going to have a couple more just in case. And you did like hell of a the most and I'm very glad because it's a shared universe so you know both shows are very similar in in style but they're very different in story and so they're kind of it's a nice opportunity to explore a world that's so expansive for me what were the early days of writing like how do you kind of I guess form that chemistry together Oh, we met at the, there's a diner that we go to uh, <laughs> called Lancers, and we would just go there every night, and we would order our usual. It was usually um, coleslaw and s sausage and chicken tenders and yeah, uh, Dr. Pepper. And, <laughs> um, and yeah, we just, Viv would have her, her laptop. Uh, we would kind of just brainstorm ideas. We would kind of start with larger concepts and then work break them down and into, okay, that would be a good episode on its own, and this would be a good episode on its own, and we kind of um, did the broad strokes first, and I remember uh, we started meeting more and more. We got to, like, it was like every other night or something like that. We would just get together and have coffee and spend hours at this diner writing this show that, um, I mean, I think we kind of had an idea. We, I mean, the intent was for it to be successful, so that was always kind of in our mind. But I don't think at the time we quite knew that like this was going to happen. It, no, it felt very organic, like very uh, like we're two students working on a like a homework assignment that we really, really, really want to get right. And um, yeah, so that was. Well, I already forgot what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Was that it? All right. Yeah. <laughs> Classic Brandon, everyone. We've done like three, four panels together. And yeah, we have, and I always forget everything. Um, okay. I just keep talking, and I hope you interrupt me. Just a lot of yes anding yep. and then shouting eventually. Oh, yeah. And, and Richard, who's not here. I know. But, but R.I.P. And Erica. I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. Don't laugh at that. He's a treasure. <laughs> I said R.I.P. <laughs> <laughs> For you guys, Erica and Christina, what was the chemistry like with the cast? Is it instant chemistry when you guys all met together as well and you read the characters? Um... Well, we've actually never recorded for Helleva together. I'd like to think Christina and I have great chemistry independent of the show. Um, but uh, yeah, we all actually, for the, pi the this f the feedback is my ADD. I know it's great. Ooh, yeah. baby. Yeah, I actually, so Verasica wasn't part of the pilot and the only group record that 
I've been a part of was for the pilot. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'd say we all had really good chemistry. I had no idea what was going on. I've said it a million times, but when I auditioned for hell of a boss, I thought it was a furry fighting game. Uh, so yeah, honored to be nominated. Happy to be here. But yeah. I'd like to think we all have good chemistry. <laughs> In terms of the community, the fans, and how much people have taken it to their hearts, what do you think people are connecting to like when they come and meet you at conventions, when they talk to you, what is it they're connecting with, with the show, the characters, what do they say to you most often? Oh no, we've got a mic issue. Oh, there, there we go, we got it, we got it. Hello, hello, can you hear me now? Okay, I get a lot of people who relate to Verasica's uh, journey about uh, dating. <laughs> and, um, and now a lot who really love how kind of, I know she's not a human, but she's like more humanized, like there was a reason why she became who she is. Erica, do you wanna add anything? Uh, sure, yeah, I think Luna is a comfort character for a lot of people. I think because she says exactly what she's thinking, and it's sort of a nice self-insert power fantasy, you know, for me when I'm recording for Luna, and I think also for other people when they're watching. Um, and also I think how she's growing and we're peeling back the layers. She's a very angry onion, you know, eventually we'll get there, uh, but yeah. And Brandon, was there anything, is there anything that surprises you when people come up to your table, they talk to you that you didn't think about with your character? Like, Well, uh, we've just introduced a character who's obsessed with my character. <laughs> and uh, some people will just dress up as her, and some people fully uh, do the whole kin embodiment. To the, uh, and uh, and uh, so far, no major boundaries have been crossed, but... I think the I think the floodgates have been open, and so yeah, uh, no, no, nothing really. Um, sometimes uh, people will pick me up. What? When people pick. Oh, like they'll just lift you up. Yeah, that's always a little strange, but it's <laughs> yeah. also kind of fun. Yeah, it's a little weird. It's weird. <laughs> maybe yeah. don't do that. Maybe maybe it's nobody assault. here. Do that. Don't do that. Yes. And Vivian and Brandon, are there any times when you've been writing together where, I mean, because you're human, where you've had writer's block, there are certain episodes, storylines or arcs you just can't push through? How do you get past that? Um, I, don't, I can't, I don't know if I've ever heard Viv say that she's having writer's block. Oh, all the time. <laughs> I know this all the time, but I've never, I've never heard her come to me like, oh, well, actually, no, that... No. Yeah, well, right <laughs> now it's like the schedule is really crazy. Like, obviously, I can't get into, like, the minutia, but everyone knows now that season three and four of Has Been got greenlit, which is really exciting. And that's awesome, but that's also a fuck ton of writing. Mm -hmm. And then we've also got Hell of a Boss writing. Yeah. And so there's a lot. I <laughs> um, so I'm alive. Wait, I, wait, can I ask a question? I have a quick question. I'm going to do some piggybacking. I, as someone who's only in the writer's room for one of the shows, is there a big difference in the process between writing each show? Yeah, yeah. The, well, I, I... I will be very careful of my answer. I will just say I personally kind of prefer how we write it on Helleva. It's a lot more fluid. It's very, very, I mean, the writing room that we've cultivated is also like basically comprised of close friends. So everyone's really understanding of like, let's just jump in real fast, like, and do a session today or whatever. And um, so that's nice because my schedule is really crazy. So it kind of works out to be more like, everyone's available today. All right, let's do it today. You know what I mean? Um, and then with like you, um, we kind of have a more untraditional, so we're like, you know, we've had a few brain, brainstorm sessions, mm -hmm. and, um, and then we kind of pass off, like, I'll write a bit, and then you write a bit, and then, you know, we kind of go over it. So, I like that process, personally. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's just because it's very, like, flexible, I would yeah. say, you know. It is fun. I like brainstorming and throwing things into the pot, and then we meld and mix them, and we combine ideas, and we always... 
I, I, I like have, when we have like all of us on a group chat. We do like these. Uh, is it Discord? Yeah, we'll use Discord. <laughs> and we're on which is also nice. Is Discord, and um, we'll be on there for hours and hours, just like workshopping different versions of jokes. And it really is. A, 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 it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it is fun. It's really fun. We'll do like a final revision, like a draft. Like it's like the fifth draft of a script, and we'll go through like line by line mm -hmm. and kind of go, this one could be funnier. Yeah. And then in, yeah, like in call kind of punch it up and that'll be really fun. Cause by the end of that, I feel really good about it. I'm like, yeah, this is like the best version of what we could come up with. So yeah. Yeah. I had a process no. question in terms of acting. I don't think it's on. Oh, so it is, when it I got is. to LA, I did the stereotypical thing of doing classes. I did a million classes, because it's like, I'm in LA, bruh. I'm gonna like, you know, try all these things. And they do, they have lots of different things where they talk about access it from, you know, within, and all of these different exercises to get into character. But for a show like this, do you use any of those kind of stereotypical acting techniques to kind of warm up, get into character, that kind of thing? Um, Richard taught me uh, to. I, I was blowing bubbles in a in a cup, like if yes. you and I, and or you know I think we talked about this too. The straw, uh, thing? The straw thing, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and, you, and you just like go and you do it for like minutes. It, it's weird, um, but I do that, and that really helps me, especially because. We usually record around like 11 or to noon or, yeah, so it's like, and my voice is not at 100% still at that hour, and so it is nice to do vocal warm-up. Do you do you do warm-up? What about you guys? I just sing show tunes in my car. That's all I do these days to warm-up. Yeah, I sing, I sing to warm-up. Oh, God, my voice. I sing to warm-up a lot, so that's yes. And then I'll do like lip trills, just the basic stuff. It's really easy for me to fall into voicing Luna, like uh, like her primal rage I can relate to. Uh, so it doesn't really take much. I remember one time I was heading to a record and I was almost late and there, the traffic was really bad. And I just remember I, was, I warmed up by screaming in my car. And then <laughs> by the time I marched into the studio, I was just like, all right, let's fucking go. I'm ready. Let's go. I got to get some stuff out. Like... I gotta blow off some fucking steam! <laughs> Erica, I have a question off the back of that. Like, what tips can you give us to access our own primal rage? Oh How do we do it? Tell us. It's so intrinsic to me. I don't even know how I do it. Um, go out and, and punch a tree. <laughs> no, don't do that. Please don't do that. I don't know. Um, just think of a time you were angry. Has everyone here been angry at one point in their lives? Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> this is why I don't teach. Go and take Richard Horvitz's class. <laughs> well, let's hear how primarily angry you are at 10.27 a.m. Are you, uh, you with me? Should we try? All right. So I'm going to count three, two, one, and I just want you all to scream really loudly. Just think of something that makes you real angry. Are you ready? You all up for it? You got to do it. Don't leave me being the only one doing this. You ready? Three, two, one. See, there you go. It's not so hard. Yeah. <laughs> wow. A round of applause. I love that. Absolutely. That was great. <laughs> I love that. So some of, somebody was just smiling in the front going, ah. Oh. <laughs> you are so politely ragey. I love it so much. Um, okay. We're going to hand it over to fan questions. Let's give a round of applause for this first part of the panel. <laughs> Stage manager Christina is over here. Hello. Say Hello. <laughs> Please, everybody, line up behind Christina, if you and politely, please. Uh, please mind your fellow fans, right behind Christina. Yes, yeah, she'll direct you. I'm going to come down right now, and we're going to do fan questions. Okay, keep lining up. Keep doing your thing. I'm coming down. Yeah, that was my dad. Okay. Yeah, he just got more. Right. Hello, my dear. 
Um, come right up here so that everyone can see you. All right, panel, are you ready for fan questions? We're over here. Right, come right up so everybody can see you. And um, please say what your name is and what your question is. My name is Lainey Sanchez, and how do you guys see all your characters like relating to each other and talking to each other? How do you see your characters relating to each other and talking to each other? Um, oh, uh, <laughs> sorry, I didn't have anything ready. Uh, I, well, I very much relate to how much Blitz loves Luna because I love Erica very much and I'm very protective over Erica. And, um, oh, everyone's looking. Um, and that's, and that's all what I think. Sorry. I, I, Anyone else? Want to <laughs> was it? Was, what Did I answer guys? that right? Was that right? Yes, you got that right. Was that was that sufficient? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Anyone right, else thanks. want to add anything? Uh, I think Rosica. I'm sorry, I don't know the actor's name. She says what I said was great. Yeah. Erica, Christina, Erica, Christina. How do you two see each other's characters relating or talking to each other? How do you see your characters relating or talking to one another? Wait, how do I see it? Or Luna and Rosica? They never talk to each other. I don't think they've ever talked. If they ever met. If they ever met. Oh, if they did. I would never let my daughter uh, around. Yeah. I would be a bad influence. Yeah, I don't know, man. I feel like I feel like there might be a scrap. And then there, they would probably go shopping after. Yeah. Or yeah. 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 All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank sorry, you. sorry about Thank that, guys. Yeah, it's hard to hear. Thank you. Round of applause for this question, please. Thank you. You look amazing. And you look so good. Come on up. Hi. I like your t-shirt. Come stand here so they, so they can see you. What's your name and what's your question? Hi, Monique. Um, this is a question primarily for uh, Vivian and Brandon as writers. Is there a joke or a line that you like, what you would think of as one of your favorites, like something you were really proud of that this is said in the show? Uh, for Vivian and Brandon, a joke or line that you're very proud of. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, a line that I might, I love. Uh, sorry, I fucked your husband. <laughs> I, because I, I think, I don't know, but I think it might be the only line that Blitz has said that uh, I have too. So, I. <laughs> oh, was it your husband? <laughs> <laughs> Vivian, I said do you sorry. Agree? Do you agree, Vivian? <laughs> um, oh man, I mean, it's. I need to probably have one of these at the ready. So the only thing I can think of is I was the one that wrote the episode about Mammon, um, and there's a line where he says, "Women aren't funny," <laughs> and I thought it was funny that I wrote that one and I wrote that line because it's true. Okay. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you too. Thank you. Round of applause. I'm up here. I feel like we're, we have to be on tippy toes to see you guys. So say your name clearly and your question. Hi, my name is Andrea Winter, and it's my birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Um, so my question to, to all of you is that are we ever going to get a crossover of Hell of a Boss and Has Been Hotel? I can't answer that. <laughs> but I want one. I really want one. So and, fingers crossed. And, uh, ditto, ditto, ditto. And then, the, so, so the other question that I want to ask is, which is your favorite scene from Hell of a Boss? Favorite scene from Hell of a Boss. Who wants to start? I liked uh, the, uh, in episode six, uh, season one, I liked the fight scene in the, in the, um, where Luna has the thing in her, the chain, and she's ripping everyone up. I, I thought that, uh, yeah, I was very proud of 
my whole team that day. <laughs> what about you guys' favorite scene? I liked You Will Be Okay, that whole sequence, and all to you as well, yeah. Erica? I, oh no, you're so cold. Are you gonna be? <laughs> um, I, I'd say my number one, I say it all the time, but the Luna Octavia scene from Seeing Stars uh, is one of my favorites, but there's some really good stuff coming up that I'm excited about. So yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm going to do three, two, one, and can we do a big happy birthday, please? Three, two, one, happy birthday! <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other fellow Librans in the house? Yeah, Librans? Where are you? Very rare. Hi, Libra. Li three people, three people. Um, come on forward, come on forward. Hello, my friend. Hi. Yes. Got it. Okay, loud and clear. What's your name and what's your question? Really loud. Okay. Hi, my name is Karina, and uh, I just finished two seasons of Hell of a Boss, and I have to say the soundtrack is really amazing. So my question is for you guys, how was the process like for recording the vocals, and was there anything different about the process compared to other projects? Well, we could, we, uh, I, in other projects, I don't get aware what I slept in to work. And so, <laughs> it, it is kind of nice being able to just wear whatever you want. You could, for all you know, I could be doing this show nude. Um, so, <laughs> I, I like, I like not having to get into a, a costume. I, this is my, really my one, like, voice acting gig, you know, uh, this and has been. So I don't know, Eric, I mean, that's more of a question for, for the two of you. I forgot the question. What is it? Yeah, my question is, um, how was the process like for recording the vocals in the songs for Hello? Oh, for Bob? the songs. Oh, I haven't. I cannot comment. <laughs> um, so we get the sheet music and the scratch tracks ahead of time learn them and we would record after the dialogue was recorded just kind of straight into it um i'm not sure if it's too different from other times sometimes they'll schedule a separate session with like a different director director and engineer for singing but for this one it's it's the same people we have the composer sam or um Oh wait, I sang backup vo vocals for something yeah. at one point, but it was just it was sandwiched like into my session, so it was just like yeah, yeah. It's like, it was just a couple like ooh la ooh la ooh la, like it wasn't yeah. crazy. Usually but it was really it's fun, part yeah. of a normal session. Sometimes we'll do it different. Obviously, Hasman was different because there was so much music and some of the songs were so demanding that sometimes an actor would request a music session oh, yeah. so they could focus just on that because it is it's like. Doing a full song, I mean, you have to. We, we end up doing like 30, 40 takes. Oh, totally. Uh, for for other uh, projects that I've sung on, yeah, it's usually a yeah, separate exactly. session. Yeah. So for Hell of a, we usually do fold it in because the songs aren't usually too demanding. It depends. It, it is. It depends on how much script there is. Um, like for example, with Bryce, recently we had a lot of efforts and some singing. And he did do both, but like we had to monitor, we had to like go back to the efforts because efforts obviously are very demanding on the voice. And so we were like, didn't want his voice to be ruined for the song, you know? So it just depends on the session, depends on the song, depends on all those things kind of, but they were, are recorded the same. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Round of applause for this question, please. Hello, my dear. Hello. Um, okay, nice and loud and clear name and question. Hi, I'm Emma. Um, first of all, I really love the show. Um, I named my car after Blitz. <laughs> um, oh, um, with the silent O, named the car after uh, Blitz. Oh, thank you. Um, but my question for Brandon is, so much of your other content is like such physical comedy. How do you find yourself translating that over, um, over voice? Well, uh, Erica was there the day that I, uh, and she'll never let me forget this, so I'm going to beat you to jump it. In. I know, she always brings us up, so I'm going to do it first. Um, on my first day during the pilot, that was my first day ever recording anything, vo just my voice, that's not on camera. Oh, yeah. 
And so there's a lot of blitz jumping in that pilot and doing efforts, and I was fully doing like this. And my, they're, they're not getting my voice, you know, I'm, you're getting every other word that I'm saying. Uh, and no one stopped me, really. They just kind of let me do it. <laughs> and I hear, I hear about it from Erica and Richard. How many years has it been? It's been five years? Yeah. Four? Yeah, I've been, been here. I still hear about this yeah. shit. He almost so. took out a mic stand a few times. Like, so. he, would, he would give this amazing take, and then they'd go, oh, okay, that was so good, but we just, we just need it with you on the mic so we can get it. <laughs> It just feels weird going like, uh, 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 and not moving your not body. Moving. Yeah, it's really different. And that was hard for me. To, it kind of, it kind of looks a little dumb. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that was one of the only sessions we got really big, like a lot of. I mean, now we're getting more behind the scenes footage too. But like that one, we had a whole like documentation of. And so I want to at some point release that because it's such a remember. I just remember that was like the start of it all. You know, it was like that. And then it was um, Richard. Obviously, it was my first time reading, meeting Richard. And he was so immediately warm and friendly. And I was like, okay, this is going to be a good day. And then um, I already knew Brock, who voiced um, Stolas in the pilot. So it was like a great group of people. So I remember it very fondly. I do, too. Thank but you for your question. Round of applause, please. Like Thank you. Come on up, my friend. Oh my Hello. God. Right. Loud and clear. Name in question. I like that you call me ma'am. Thank you, very polite. Okay, here we go. Name in question. My name is Steven, and um, Monday is actually gonna be my birthday. Oh my God, happy birthday. Happy early birthday. Thank you. And first of all, two things. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Oh my God. All right. And now, yeah, here's my question for uh, Vivian. Um, will we ever get uh, more Deary? <laughs> um, probably, yeah, at some point. She's not very important, so, you know. <laughs> but she's funny, so yes, at, at some point before the show is over, there will be more of right. that character, uh, yeah. Can you say it as uh, Deary would say it? What? Can you say it as Deary would say it? Like, oh, oh yeah. okay, all right, okay. <laughs> I, I'm gonna do the voice actor thing. I just got it. All right, cool. All right. Yeah, no. <laughs> this is what you guys get all the time. <laughs> Stay here. Three, two, one, then happy birthday, all right? We got another one. Three, two, one. Happy birthday. Yeah. Friend of applause. Thank you so much, friend. Thank you. Come on up. Hi there, okay. Super loud and clear, name in question. Hi, my name is Ad Ad Adicia. How do you think how, this all of you, how do you think how the internet changed the animation industry? The in internet, like, like YouTube, changed the animation in the industry. How did YouTube change animation industry? Was, was the question how has how YouTube changed the animation industry. I mean, massively. Um, obviously, like, Hasbun was, you know, I, it, not the first indie animation ever, no. Like, we were, there's been indie animation for as long as there's been animation. But I think YouTube changed the game because when I released the Hasbun pilot, it found an audience that, you know, the studios might not have known existed or they might not have trusted existed because I think there's, especially in traditional media, there's so much, like, it, like scare they're scared to try new ideas like kind of yeah there's a lot of red tape and there's a lot of executive and, and people who are looking down and making sure that it's, it reaches the biggest audience possible and you know and and it's because there's millions of dollars wrapped up in it so like it makes sense but it's also so hindering and I think so many good ideas that could have found an audience are you know shelved or they don't make it and what I love about YouTube is I think with has been, I proved like something weird and something queer and something music, like a musical adult comedy that doesn't look like Family Guy and is super queer can find an audience and be successful yeah. because that's not really a thing. And so 
that was something I think really like opened the door. And now we've got so many other indie projects that are successful. Um, you know, I think the the one I'm sure every single person in this room knows is um, um, Digital Circus, which broke records. So, you know, it's one of those things where I'm like, I'm now that there's projects like mine and, and that one that's like blowing the roof off of like traditional media as like numbers, I feel like it, it is the, the, the new place to get your start. And I think that like I'm a big advocate for just make it, um, you know, because I think the studios are now looking. And so if you make something and it resonates, there's a very high chance that it might have a bigger life, you know, because it's proven. So. I think it's it's a huge benefit. So. Thank you, Vivian. Good question. Thank you. Round of applause for this question, please. Hello, friend. Okay. Super loud and clear. Here we go. Because it's there's such feedback. Okay, go for it. Name, question. My name is Evan, and first of all, I love the show. And there's an iconic, iconic line from Blitz that I say like all the time, and that line is "Christ on a stick." <laughs> a Christ on a stick. Oh yeah, that became oh. his catchphrase. We write it a lot into scripts. Christ on, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my question is, can you just act like your characters for like a couple minutes? A couple minutes. Couple minutes. <laughs> <laughs> two, two whole two like forty seconds. <laughs> like five. Or five? She just—they just said five. Uh, okay. No, no. Let's go for thirty seconds. Okay. Is my mom Let's still do in the 30 audience? seconds. Are you ready? Hi guys, so are you enjoying LA Comic Con? No. <laughs> I'm here for the corn dogs. <laughs> All right, LA Comic Con. Y'all ready to get fucked up and make some bitch and bad choices? <laughs> Sorry, mom. Can you uh, can you describe the flavor of a corn dog? I've never had one. Being a Scottish person, please describe the flavor and your character. I mean, my dad loves choking on dick, so he's probably the best one to describe it. For, that is not true. I do not choke. <laughs> Love it. Thank I don't you. want a corn dog now. Really hungry. Really hungry. Oh, wait, we're talking about we're talking about corn dog. I don't. That, there's probably the food truck outside. You can stuff on up there. Whatever you wear, wherever you want them. They're great. You can put them any place. <laughs> Love that. Is that okay? We did thirty seconds. Thank you so much. Can we have a round of applause for this? Very curious about corn dogs now. Very. I'm corn dog curious, you guys. Okay. Loud and clear. Name and question, friend. Sure. Hi, I'm Tony. And this question is directed to Brandon and Vivian. Oh, is it? <laughs> so, does Blitz have a dad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, he does. Blitz, you know, Blitz's dad is not a very liked uh, uh, entity in this show. Just so you all know, this is uh, my dad. Oh. Um, oh. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Who I, I love you. I love you. Thank you for not selling me into show business. Uh, I sold my own soul on my own. So, um, uh, does he have it? Yeah, it's a piece of shit. <laughs> good, good to know, Brandon. Love you guys. I love you too. Aww. Oh, so oh cool. round of applause. <laughs> Keep it going. Round of applause. <laughs> there he is. He's a Jedi Master, if you haven't uh, noticed. Look at that. <laughs> Please don't trip. Please don't trip. Um, okay, my friend, story up here. Loud and clear. Name and question, friend. Okay. My name is God is God Valenzuela. Sorry. I'm the guy who met you yesterday. Okay, so Welcome cool. back. question. When was the first search time? Oh, my God. It's just that. I know it's just say the question right Okay. Quick. When was the first first time that you ever heard of the franchise? Of the franchise? Of the what? When was the first time you ever heard of the franchise? Franchise. 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 
The first time you ever oh, heard the of the franchise. Oh, a hell of a boss, you mean? Yes. Uh, it, uh, Viv, uh, what, it was in 2019 or 18, 20, what year was it? 20. Might have been 2018, it was the 19, I think, is when it came out. There was a point in time when Hell of a Boss merely existed as a page in a binder that Viv brought to me and showed me. It was in a page among a few other shows. Um, that was the first time I had heard of it, and it was Hell of a Boss, and what was it, like two other shows that you had? Yeah, it was two other adult shows that may or may not happen someday. Totally unrelated. They were not Hell of a shows. But yeah, yeah, and in a lineup of, of three, sh you know, different shows that I had never heard of, Hell of a stuck out to me the most, and uh, I, I immediately fell in love with. It. I'm like, oh, a workplace comedy in hell, and I get to be the boss. This is this is amazing. Yes, um, my yeah, my, fr my 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 first idea that I remember like. I was afraid to contribute anything because Viv already had this world established, but I was like, what if we go up to Earth for part of the show and we, we show them killing people on Earth? Because I think they were originally supposed to be assassins only within Hell, was that it? Or did they go up I to Earth? I don't remember. I'd have to go find it, but yeah. But I like that we start, and I wanted to start in a school. <laughs> <laughs> and then we see the teacher do a murder homicide. I think that's Yes, Yeah, that's I think that was, that was all your idea. Strong start. Thank you. Round of applause for this question, please. Thank you. Thank you, friend. Come on up. You look nice and cozy. What is your name and what is your question, my friend? Hi, I'm Shannon, and coming to you dressed as fat nuggets. Anyway, my question is, is for Brandon and Vivian. So, how would you describe the relationship between the Vs? You know, Vox, Val, and Velvet. Because I've seen people who, who ship them, who think of them as more platonic, or, you know, outside of the news that dropped where, in the last season where Vox and Val kissed. So, I want to know, how would you describe their relationship? Um, hmm. I mean, I feel like a lot of their dynamic is in that first season. Obviously, they're not super major characters in the first season, but they're very big in the second season, which is why I'm like, I don't know, I'm getting into like dangerous waters because they are a big part of season two. So if I can't answer this satisfactorily, it will definitely be answered in the next season. But they're... Their dynamics, I feel like, are really on display. So however you choose to read into it is probably accurate. So... Thank you very much. Round of applause for this question. Thank you, friend. Thank you. Come on up. I recognize you. Hello. You look amazing. What's your name and what's your question? Nice and loud. Hi. Uh, my name's Alex. And I was curious how you went about connecting with Steve Horace, getting him on the show, and what it's like working with him. Sorry, Richard Horowitz. Oh. Richard, Richard Horowitz. Um, I like to uh, physically assault him in the face whenever we're in the booth. It's fun to punch Richard. He's just, you know, he's got a real punchable demeanor. Um, <laughs> he takes it like a real Horowitz. Uh, I don't know. What is it like working with him? I mean, it's great. I, I work with Richard a lot because we're... Um, he voice directs for both shows, so every record session, basically. And he's great. He'll start singing a song and not stop until it's done. That's, oh, that's been yeah. fun to get used I, to. <laughs> I've, I mean, I, it's great, but it's also like he'll start like a song from Hamilton, and you know that goes for like five minutes. Yeah, and it'll just he go. He does not stop singing. <laughs> I think he's always the main character everywhere he goes. Yeah. I think he has that energy to him. <laughs> and you'll wait till he's finished singing. Thank you very much. Round of applause, please. Thank you. Your question. Thank you. Come on up, my friend. Stand right here. Loud and clear. Name and question. Hi, my name's Sonia. And I was wondering, uh, who is your guys' least favorite character? Your least favorite character. Uh, yeah, oh, character. Oh. Who wants to start? <laughs> Why would you ask that? <laughs> yeah, Viv, what's your least favorite character that you made? Uh, 
Mine and Rager's. I think that guy's a hack. <laughs> Anyone else want to answer? Least favorite? Well, for Rossica, it's very obvious. <laughs> but I actually love Litzo, so. Aww. Moxie, because fuck him. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to double down and say Moxie. <laughs> Hell yeah, Dad. Hell yeah. Thank you very much. Round of applause, please. Hello, my friend. Super loud and clear name and question. My name is Sebastian, and I'd like to know what is the wildest fan theory you guys have heard? Okay. Only because this one has been answered... And it actually, you know, I don't think this is the wildest one because I can almost see the thread. But the Wally is Mammon one. I was like, what? <laughs> but, you know, I see it. I kind of see it. I was like, they're both like kind of sales mini, I guess. Like nobody met Mammon yet. But no, they're not the same. I hope that's clear after the episode. <laughs> but yeah. That one, was, that one was really funny for a while. But I don't think it's the wildest, but that's the one that I think is the easiest to say is wild. Thank you very much. Thank you for your question. Round of applause. Thank you. Oh, hello, you look amazing. Please stand here loud and clear. Name and question. Hello, my name is Isaiah. And my question is, going into the modern entertainment independent industry, knowing you're going up against all these big name com entertainment companies and names, what is something that you look forward to the most or something that has kept you going? Um, wow. Being an entertainer. Okay, that's quite a question. Who wants to answer? So going up against all of these other independent companies, you said? Big names. Big companies yeah. in the industry, how do you keep going? How do you keep motivated? Well, okay, keep I think it's unhealthy to compare. So inherently, I think if you're viewing other shows or studios or whatever as competition, I think that's you doing yourself a disservice because you're never going to be the most um, accoladed uh, famous, you know, I mean, like, if we did that, I'd cry every night that we're not arcane, you know, like, there's no point, so to me, I'm like, I don't feel that, like, before my shows got picked up, I was just thankful that we might be able to make more, so at the end of the day, I think my only concern is, like, I want to tell these stories, um, so I want them to succeed as well, so we, you know, we work our asses off to make the best quality you know, show possible from the writing to the acting to the to the visuals, which I'm very proud of. So I'm very proud of my show. Um, and I think like you just kind of have to keep going because like there's always going to be someone who gets more views or or is more considered better or whatever. You know, like you're always going to get that. And if you compare yourself to that or you compare yourself to oh, like you know, and I did early on in my career, so I think it's okay to. But I think pretty early on, I, had, I actually had a wake-up call from my best friend Sam because there was another creator around my age. I will not name who they are, but like they were another creator around my age and they had just accomplished so much. And I was like, I was like, oh, they're like, they're getting another show or another movie and like I'm still working so hard. Like, God, like, and it wasn't even like a why can't that be me? It was more like, it was more like, what makes their work so special, whatever. And she kind of looked at me and she was like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Like, really? Like, well, firstly, you're not them. Secondly, like, why does it matter? Because, like, you'll get there. And if you don't, you don't, whatever. But who cares? Like, it was just such a brutal, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, like calm down. And I, I needed that. I needed that moment. And that was, like, that was years ago now. But that was such a, like nice moment of like, yeah, you're right. Because like that person never met them, don't know their struggle, don't know their story. I don't know, especially now having a show on Amazon and, and all this, you don't know what creators have to go through yeah. to like all the development, all the production, all the like work and all the like behind the scenes. So I have no idea what that creator went through to get to where they were. And now I know because now I'm kind of in that position and it's very... 
it was very humbling. And so I think back on that time where I was a little bit more like, again, this was before any of them had come out. And I was just like in this like, am I going to do anything with my life? Am I ever going to be successful? And it was a very nice moment, like humbling moment to have someone that I love and trust go, you really, that's not the right mindset. Get out of that mindset. And it's really nice to be free of that feeling that I have to be at a certain level just because someone else is my age or in the same field as me or they have a show on the same platform. Like, you never should. You should always be proud of what you're making and move forward with it. And I'm sorry, that's such a long answer. But... <laughs> Thank you, Vivian. Great answer. Thank you. Round of applause for that question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, my dear. You look amazing. Oh, my goodness. You look gorgeous. Okay, what's your name and question? Super loud, please. Hi, I'm Catherine. I'm Catherine. I first want to say, Brandon, I love you. I love your original YouTube content, and I love you in both has been and hell of a boss. Oh, I love um, you too. My question, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, my question is for Christina. You've done a lot of voices, <laughs> Spe specifically in, you know, Hell of a Boss and Miraculous. How do you go? <laughs> how do you go from a kid-friendly show to? A show where it's swearing and sexual and just genuinely, you can be out there. <laughs> I'm used to a certain level of like hopping around from personality to personality. Um, I will say I'm, very, I'm much more Verasica-like than I am Marinette. I think I used to be a Marinette, but I'm, these days I'm definitely more Verasica. The hero's journey right there. The hero's journey, yes. Um, <laughs> But what I really loved about Verasica is, especially when we were first starting, I was still processing a lot of my own relationship woes. So it was very helpful to, to see that in a character. Um, yeah, it takes a certain kind of mental disconnect to be able to be different personalities um, from session to session. But it's, it's maybe the best part about the job. Thank you. Thank you very much Thank for you. the question. Round of applause, please. Thank you. Hello there. Please step on up. What is your name in question? Uh, my name's Valentina. And, and my question is, what's your favorite line that your character has to said? What is your favorite line that your character has said? Uh, the one, the one where I fuck the husband. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, they let me out because I'm still famous. My rehab is for sad loser wash-ups. So your sister says hi. <laughs> um. <clears throat> oh no. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> Thank you very much. Round of applause, please. Thank you. Please come up. Come on up. Thank you. All right, friend. Name and question, super loud and clear. Hi, my name is uh, Nick, and um, I just want to say first of all that I think Helva Boss and especially Hasbro Hotel has been like pushing like what, um, how, like, smaller creators can, like, um, expand to, like, to the bigger places, so I'm very grateful for that. And my question was about, um, with the development of the recent shorts that have been up, the hell of a shorts on YouTube, um, like, what's the difference between developing those and, uh, uh, larger episodes, and, um, are you interested in creating has-been hotel shorts? Um... I mean, I would love to. That one's logistically a little trickier. Has been is the Amazon entity, so, you know. But I would love to, like, talk to them about that because I personally think more has been content, just, you know, I love those characters to death. But with Helleva, it just made sense because 
especially since um, we wanted to have more content out, especially during, because, um, you know, obviously uh, we haven't gotten to the end of the season yet, but I already know that it's going to be a big, like, we want to do a more traditional release. So we don't want it to be these, like, we're working to a deadline to get an episode out every, like, three months. Like, we want it to be more their, like, like the way it's been this year, where they're, like, relatively a month apart kind of or like you know just just a more like structured release like maybe even like weekly or just something like that we haven't quite figured it out but like I think because of that it's going to be a bigger wait and so we were anticipating that and we're like well we don't want to leave you guys just with just no content for this like massive amount of time so the shorts are kind of like we're a solution for that and uh, it also turned creatively into a thing like where we were like, well, the shorts can be funnier. They can be like, we're not held to the story of the show, so we can explore new characters, we can explore minor characters, and we can also kind of go back to the roots of the show. And so that's why so many of them have been the missions, because it's like, we, we kind of did notice, like, especially me, I'm like, I got very conscious that the show did move more in a like narrative direction and that's just kind of how I am as a storyteller I was like I can't just not this, this is clearly where the heart of the show is and we're going to go this direction and I love it but I think there is an element of yeah but like it was nice to just kind of do the goofy shit and the shorts are getting crazier and crazier I, I think the last one just personally that came yeah. out that is my that's what my favorite and Viv wrote that one by the way Thank you. The Chupra Kadupra and uh, <laughs> was that I think, the script? no that I think There's, was you I think the Chupa Kadupra was not in the script what was the original it line? was probably just I'm the Chupa Cabra and I'm gonna fuck you all you know and then you were like where the hell did I pull I don't Chupa know. Kadupra from well, maybe, maybe it was I don't remember I feel like that was a euism it probably was yeah I I, I I like to um, change as many words as possible and see if they'll let me do it. <laughs> yeah, I was actually going to say, like, give um, Brandon and Vivian their flowers on that because they write, but they also let us improvise uh, and add things, and a lot of times they end up keeping it. So it's it's really it's always better. They're not like, completely married, it. you know, yeah. to exactly what's written on the page. So it's great. It's a great opportunity to play. Thank you. Round of applause. Thank you. Um, okay, we've got 10-ish minutes, so keep your questions to one question each, if that's okay. You look amazing. What is your name in question? So, my name is Kieran Scott Griffiths, and this is a question for Viv, right? Um, I noticed that in episode 9 of season 2, there was a Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy detail so, and I found that really cool. Do you watch the show? The, the, the like, Harley Quinn animated show? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that one's great. My dad works on that show. My, da my dad works on that show. That's awesome. Well, give your crap. Uh, yeah. That's Completely so cool. tortured the word dad. Give your dad all the praise from me. It's a great show. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Round of applause, please. Hello, you look incredible. Please stand here. Okay, name and question. Let's go. Hi, um, my name is Stella, and so someone, um, obviously Hollywood was home to like many iconic lines. Um, someone else already asked what your, favorite, what your favorite line from your character was. What's your favorite line from another character? Favorite line from another character. Oh, I like Moxie's coffee order. <laughs> I, I wonder if anyone's ever ordered that and, and how long they've been a diabetic now for. I think someone has. Oh. I don't advise it. Anyone else? Nope. I, I really like your, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. I like, I am not a possum. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Round of applause, please. Thank you. Hello. You look great. Thank Stand you. right here, my friend. Okay, name and question. Hi, my name is uh, Red. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I just love the show so much, both has been and Halifa. Um, I'm autistic, and I have seen so much of myself as an autistic person in the show, and I was just wondering if that, if any of the characters from either Hasbin or Halaba are a neurodivergent autistic, like, is that canon? Um, well, I, I don't 
like to canonize things that like aren't 100% intentional. That said, um, I mean, I think a lot of the characters, a lot of people have already read as neurodivergent, and I think they, I think it's an absolutely fair read. I mean, I'm, uh, I have ADHD, so. I think naturally, being a writer, I put that into a lot of my characters because that's how I know. Um, and then I think some of the other writers, like, I mean, obviously, I don't want to diagnose, but I feel like everyone kind of puts in kind of a part of themselves. So there's a lot of neurodivergence making the show. Um, that said, I do know we have a plan for like a like 100% like this character is like you know we're written to be um, an autistic character in the future, but as of this second. It, I think it is just kind of vibes. If you connect with a character, it's very, very possible that it's an accurate read of the character. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, well, my gosh, you look amazing. What's your name and question? Um, my name's Diamond. My question is, um, yesterday I was cosplaying Lucifer, and I want to know, will we get more of him? Like more Lucifer? More yes. Lucifer, will we get more? I can say more, that's all I can say, okay. to be safe. But, yes. Cool. Thank you, round of applause. Hello, you also look at, you all look so, yeah, you look all great. Okay, name and question, let's go. Hi, I'm Jay, and I was wondering what it's like as voice actors and as a director to work with the animation team. Well, what's it like working with the animation team as actors and directors? Uh... With the animation, working with the animation team is a little bit of a, of a one-way mirror in a sense that they have to hear us a lot and we're already gone from the project by the time they even start. Um, that being said, sometimes the animators will come up with stuff that's fucking phenomenal and we didn't voice it so Viv will give us a call and say hey I really like what these animators did can you come back and make sounds that look like what your character's doing here yeah. so it does you know sometimes it can affect you know we have to come back in because the animation is just so great we have to like now match those uh, 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 you know whatever or maybe Blitz looked like he was saying a line louder than he than I said it yeah. so then I come back in and I say it louder to match what the animator did I don't know yeah, I, I don't directly interact with the animation team except at, at, at a few events, and they've been absolutely incredible. But I maintain that I could just be making fart noises, and the animation team would make it look and sound amazing. Uh, so yeah, like, yeah, they, I feel like the animation does so much heavy lifting uh, in this show. So lucky to be a part of it. Happy they're making us look good. Yeah, they're amazing for sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hello, my dear. You look so great. Okay, what's your name and what's your question? My name is Zelda, and um, what's your favorite character you've ever played? Ever played? Ever played. Yes. Thank you. I will not be offended if it's not for my show. <laughs> I truly don't have one. I love them all for different reasons. I know that's a boring answer, but I, I don't think I could pick. Yeah. Yeah. It really just depends on what mood I'm in. That's going to be the character. Sometimes I, I feel like playing a happy character. Some days I feel like playing a, a character who gets bulldozed. Um, yeah, I like to keep it pretty fluid. That's the weirdest thing about being an actor. It's, I think it's just boring to be one person your whole life um, or play one character your whole, you know, it's like, yeah. I'll pick. <laughs> okay, I have a top three, okay? Well, maybe a top four. Maybe a top five. See what I mean? Okay, let me see. I love Ladybug, of course. Um, Kilua from Hunter Hunter was really fun. Verasica. I love, love, love getting to sing. And Hawk the Pig. Thank you. Thank you. Is it Zelda? Thank you. Round of applause for Zelda, please. Thank you very much. Okay, next up. Oh my goodness, you are so cute. <laughs> what is your name and what's your question, my dear? My name is Zan. Um, so, my, so, do you know like episode seven of, of like, Hell of a Boss? That episode? Do we know it? Episode seven of Hell of a Boss, and what, what's your question? It, it was, so, you know that part, like, where Blitzo went, like, I really had to, to throw up. 
what? And w- you what had was to throw up? And he had to throw up. But what was that in? Is that in episode seven or eight? I feel like he's thrown up in a few episodes. Okay, true. <laughs> yeah. And all fairness, well, what was, what's happening in the scene? Yeah, what was happening? Describe the scene to us. Okay, so my question, w- so my question was like, what, what made him throw up in that the the journey? What made me throw up? Something what made me. What made you throw up? What made me throw up? Yes. You throw up. <laughs> Verosica walked in the room. <laughs> Is that sufficient? Good answer. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Can we have a round of applause? I love it. We are fast running out of time, so we're gonna can we just we're gonna just speed speed round if that's okay. So let's let's go. You look amazing. Name and question. Let's go. Hi, my name is Jevin and I'm autism. I have a question for Alastair. Hey Alastair, do you fall in love with Angel Dust? For Alistair, does Alistair fall in love with Does him? Alistair fall in love with Angel Dust? Oh. I'm holding back a more visceral reaction. <laughs> um, I- I'm going to say no, because n- no. <laughs> but if you can have fun. Oh, yeah. Have fun. Ship what you want. <laughs> Thank Sorry, you. I didn't expect Thank that. You. <laughs> Thank you for your question. You look great. Okay, next up, let's go. We go I want to get through everybody because you guys have been waiting for ages. Name and question, let's go. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris. I uh, got a question for Ms. Viv. Um, having gone through two shows, like front and back the whole process, what would you kind of go back in time and apply um, with what you know now um, for anybody out there who's kind of at the beginning of their journey um, oh, being a showrunner and stuff? Go ahead. This is a good one. All right, I can get work on y'all right fast. Uh, get a lawyer. <laughs> Um, no, I'm, I'm not kidding. The, you know, I actually said this at Annecy recently. So this is, this is for the art students. This is for the people who are serious about wanting to do what, what I do. Um, yeah, like literally, I, I learned so much. It's like contracts and lawyers are important because yeah. you, at, the, at any time you're working with a team, you just need everybody to understand what they're doing. And you need under, everyone to understand, you know, hey, like, this is a project from me where you're working on it, but like, you know, I'm paying you to work on, you know, just simple things like that. Cause you, you wouldn't think it matters, but it does if you want your project to become as big and as, as like professional. So that's my biggest thing going back because, you know, in the early days it was so free for all. And it was so like, let's just work with friends. And like, obviously everything was, was, you know, there was a budget and everything, but it just, it gets so different the bigger the project gets. And then you have to kind of go back and be like, oh, you know, so that's my biggest advice. And, 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 and my advice for any artist wanting to pitch, because even like, let's take like the pilot stuff out of it. Um, when you're pitching, it's great to have a lawyer because that person is the person that's going to fight for a fair deal and ownership and, and rights and all those things for you. And I think that's more important than ever now because we see so many times shows will get pitched and maybe they'll get shelved. And that lawyer is there to fight for like, all right, well, let's say you guys don't make it, you get it back, you know, and things like that. So that's why I advocate for it because it's not just, you know, it's not a big fancy thing. You can hire somebody to just work, you know, for, for you for the time you need them. But it really is about protecting you and your rights because, you know, art, especially animation, it becomes a business and you have to like kind of, you have to like own yourself and own your idea and you have to like, you know. So it's, it's not a fun answer, but it is like genuinely like on top of the list. I was like, I wish I'd had NDAs, like proper NDAs, proper like XYZ, prep, you know, because like the bigger something gets, the less like you're protected and the less protected you are, the more vulnerable you are. And I think it's just important to be as like up, you know, up to snuff. And, and I think people working with you also respect that because there's an understanding, you know, so that's my biggest advice for anyone wanting to make a project, like, like especially one that you want to have a bigger life. Thank you. Yeah. Now, guys on the stage, we have three minutes and six people. Can we do a speed round? Speed Can round. we do this? Let's do it. Let's get through your Let's okay. any big long answers. Name, question, let's go. Okay, my name is Ian, and I want to ask, why does Blitz always have cheese and ketchup on you? It's not ketchup. Everyone thinks it's hot ketchup. Sauce. It's hot sauce. <laughs> Thank you, round of applause, speed round. Right. Come on up. Name a question. Let's go. Hi, my name is Kit. Uh, oh. Since you had Grandpa meet Blitz and Moxie, would any of your other characters meet the IMP? 
I think I think a handful of them have had their brush run-ins with uh, IMP. Yeah. Thank you. Speed runs. Let's go. I want to get through everybody. Nim, question. Jaden, um, I've been a big fan of the Goishas, and I'm just wondering. Uh, Besides the ones that are going to show up in the upcoming episodes, are you planning to introduce the other 72? Probably not all 72, but we definitely <laughs> see a lot more in season three. I'll say that. Thank you. Take a seat. Looking good. Name and question. Hello, my name is Celeste. Um, my question is, um, out of all the shorts, like including season one, season two, and the shorts, what is your favorite scene? And also, you guys have inspired me to become a voice actor. Aww. Favorite scene? Uh, 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 Chupra Kadupra. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, but you guys want to add anything real quick? I, I watched that episode oh, a little bit ago in the screening, and it was hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> so funny, the Chupra Kadupra. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good luck with your voice career. Okay, name and question. Hi, name's Robert. I have a question for Miss Vinny. Have you ever thought about making a movie version of Hell of the Boss? Movie version, have you thought about I it? I would love to. I, my dream is feature, so I would love to. It's not in the cards at the moment because we're making the show. But, um, you know, after it's, the show's done, who knows? I would love to do that. Love to do it. Okay, thank you very much. Last but not least, name and question. Let's go. My name's Andrew, and I wanted to know, how was it, on, how was it like being on uh, We A Boo Boo, the short for Brandon? How, what was it like? Yeah, for We A Boo Boo. Uh, it was, it was the Stab Stab. I just want, that was not a, a reference to Has Been, by the way. The Stab Stab oh, at the it? end. It wasn't. I, cause oh, I, that was people before. Ask you if <laughs> yeah, people are like, oh, was that a, a nifty reference? And I think that was before I had seen. No, yeah, uh, it was. Really, that was yeah. well before I had ever seen that episode. So that was a pure coincidence that I killed her the you same did way. did that for fun. Because yeah, it's fun. I was, it was if funny. I was to kill a fan, that's how I'd do it. <laughs> Thank you. Stay there. Thank you very much. Round of applause for the fans. I'm coming back on stage. Coming back. I'm coming back. Oh my God. Okay, my knees, the heels. I want to do one last thing before you guys leave the stage. Um, and I'm going to get a video. I want you all. Uh, by the round of applause for the fans, very, very quickly. Before we say goodbye to these guys, I want you all to shout at the top of your voices, shut the f up. Can you do that? Okay. Guys, do you want to take center stage? Let's do it. All right. Really loud, okay? You ready? I want to wake up the whole convention hall. Face here. Yeah, I'll get you. Okay. And the count of three, two, one, we're gonna go shut the fuck up. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Please give a round of applause for Brandon, Vivian, Christina, and Erica. Louder, louder, let's go. Hey there, this is Nolan North, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Good for you. Very proud of you. Now go watch more. Oh, and have fun and follow your fandom. I like that. I like it a lot. <laughs>